everyone and welcome back to Family Life Builders TV where we're rebuilding norms and transforming society. My name is Tosi Opeolua and I am a transformational coach. In this video, I'm going to be talking about best marriage advice for new wives. And before we go, don't forget to subscribe, like, subscription is free. Like and share this video with new wives that you know around you. I appreciate you for doing that because you're helping us when you do that. So let's dive into it. Number one, you are no longer single. You need to know that a lot of people, when they get married, they always feel, they always still feel, including me, we find it difficult to adjust, but it's because we're not carrying this consciousness that, you know what? I'm now married. I need to know that I won't find my things the way I put them. So I am now married as a woman. A lot of women are more organized than men. So that makes it difficult for us to cope with, you know, them removing their boxers and putting it not in the basket, but halfway into the basket, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's very, very essential. All those will actually change. Like after five years or thereabouts, they will change and start putting things right. So just know that you are now double in one. So you're no longer a single. It's difficult to get that, but you just have to adjust to it. Number two, correct and accept him while you wait for change. You need to correct and accept him while you are waiting for change. When you make the correction, one of the challenges is this. As a new couple, you're always sweet. You don't want to have you don't want to offend him. You don't want to offend him. So you want to look good. You want to be kind. You want to be nice. No. When he's doing something that is not right, correct him immediately. Once you correct him immediately, he's going to have it in mind. It might not change immediately, but you will have it in mind that you just corrected him for this thing. So when he's doing it again, he will understand in pressing toothpaste, in covering the toilet seats, in dropping things in the right place or returning things back to their space. He will get used to it, but you need to allow him to have a breathing space for the change to occur. Number three, make up your mind to enjoy the sex. For some people who don't enjoy sex, probably because um, of their past, probably because it's painful, you have to be conscious of finding solutions to it. Go out there, go see the doctor, go see the therapist, heal and make sure you enjoy your sex. Learn different styles. It's part of the bond that holds that marriage. So invest in learning more about it. Number four, don't cut off good friends and family immediately you get married. A lot of people cut off, you know, friends, family, immediately they get married. And when challenges come up, they have no one to run to, you know. Especially if you have a man who is isolating you from family and friends, then there's a, it's a red flag. So you really need to do something and do it so, so fast. It's very essential. Number five, yes make up your mind to enjoy your marriage marriage is enjoyable i tell you marriage is enjoyable if we choose if we both choose to enjoy it we will enjoy it but if we don't want to enjoy it we will not enjoy it and that's why i always talk about being intentional when it comes to the issue of marriage it's very very essential you have to be intentional you have to make up your mind that you want to enjoy that marriage and you will see that it's going to work out well for you number six develop shock absorber for your expectations trust me all of us we have an expectation we have this ideal you know uh prince charming uh, we have this ideal you know thought of who you want your husband to be the way you want him to talk how you want him to look see those things will not matter in in time to come 
you will have to face what really matter the reality you will have to face that reality and embrace that reality it's very very essential because your expectation might not be what you will get at the end of the day i tell you you might be lucky you might get 90 percent of your expectation you might be able to get 75 percent of your expectation or 50 percent of your expectation but make sure you don't have too much unnecessary expectation it will wake me up with a peck it will open the door of the car for me it will wake me up with a kiss he will set me breakfast in bed and all jazz i tell you <laughs> it, it might not be what you think you know especially if you are not in the western world if you are from where i came from you know that <laughs> so don't have i mean lower the expectation and if some of your expectations are, are even reasonable enough and they are not still meeting it then you might have to talk about it but develop a shock absorber enough that you'll be able to forgive them even when they do it and number seven accept your in-laws the first two years of your marriage before you got married the attitude of your in-laws sometimes will tell you whether they want you or they don't want you but after the marriage the first two years will determine whether they will accept you or they will not accept you you might be having challenges with them before you get married but once you get married and you you adjust uh, or you adapt they will accept you but if they don't then don't force it that's okay but some things that you need to do which is very very important is number one you need to understand their culture and that's how you can actually accept them so that they can accept you and if they don't accept you that's okay but i pray it's something that everybody would love to enjoy you know acceptance from the people you are going to that you don't even know them uh, so understand their culture it's very very essential in our culture you know there's a way we greet our in-laws generally generally i will say i'm respectful you know and it's because of my upbringing i don't call people by name easily even people that are not my in-laws so i find it strange if you're my in-law and you're calling me by my first name you know i I find it very strange, but but then it's not a sin, but um, it's our culture that we respect our brother-in-laws and our sister-in-laws. It's 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 a beautiful thing if we can do it. One of the things that it will do is it will it will help us to have boundaries. It will help us to respect one another, which is very essential in every relationship um there are two situations that i i can never never forget you know i've seen a sister-in-law that told uh the, the 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 sister of her husband that um you know what they knocked their door and she said your brother is not at home so in our culture what is that supposed to mean we are yoruba in yoruba culture we don't do that and you don't do that that's wrong absolutely wrong because sometimes you need to put yourself in the shoe of those persons you know let's assume you that you are a wife that you open the door for the wife for the sister of your husband and let's assume the sister is your child and she comes back home and tell you this is what this person have done to me how will you feel so we have to put ourselves in the shoe of those in-laws you should know that you are sharing the love they have for their sibling you're sharing it with them and everybody needs to get that that you just both love this person's i hope you understand what i'm saying it's very essential for you to maintain that understanding of culture and acceptance of one another and respect for one another it's very very essential you can't tell your mother-in-law to come and be going oh yeah mama come and be going to your house you don't say that it's 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 unethical you will get married too you will have children too and then you will see what we are talking about so when you have children and the same thing is happening to you 
how will you feel? So let's always put ourselves in the space of those in-laws and, you know, vice versa. Don't maltreat the wife of your, of your um, son. Don't maltreat the son of your, I mean, your son-in-law. Don't, don't maltreat them because what goes around comes around. So it's very essential that we understand the culture that way. Those are the seven best advice that I have for a new wife if you really want to enjoy your life. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I want you to see this next video on best advice for new couple. It's going to help you. Keep becoming a better you because things work when we work it. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.